Okay. So, after, I want to say, I don't know how long this was requested to me. I want to say two weeks. I have a ton of videos that I am so behind on recording. It's just not even funny. Um, but, yeah. Going back to Dragon Ball Z, DBZ. Um, and, yes, I, I do remember one person, one member of the Cyber Clan, notifying me that there were more... Um, episodes of Dragon Ball, uh, uh, dang it, um, on the tip of my doggone tongue, uh, that Masako X made, the, uh, his own, uh, his own little, uh, comic book series of, of Dragon Ball, I can't remember on top of the dome piece, I had to get back into it, cause it was, it was interesting, but yes, um, this one, was uh, suggested by um, uh, a proud member of the Sakurai clan, and a proud um, member of the Discord. Um, join the Discord if you want, if you would like to. The biggest misconception about Dragon Ball. Now, of course, I did a review um, about Dragon Ball because I watched the series from beginning to end again and whatnot, um, talking about it. So, further ado, let's have a look at this. Oh, this is by uh, Laughing Stock Media. What is the biggest misconception in the Dragon Ball franchise? In this video, I'm going to discuss that. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you can see all of my content right away when it comes out. Okay guys, so over here on my community tab on my YouTube channel, I asked you guys a question, which is, what would you say is the biggest misconception about the Dragon Ball franchise? Okay, sorry guys, it, it, it was my, um... My OBS acting up. I apologize. Shouting and fighting. There's no real story or that the story is weak. So, I mean, this is a few different things, really. But obviously, like I said before, a bunch of people say the same thing. You know, the fact that so many people believe that Dragon Ball, especially Z, is nothing but shouting, screaming, and staring at people for episodes on end isn't really true at all. The idea it's not. that it has no story whatsoever obviously isn't true either because you know what have I and so many other Dragon Ball channels been doing videos on for years now obviously there's a lot of story in fact there's way more story than Toriyama ever touches on because so many of the characters and universes at this point haven't even really been touched on by comparison exactly so there's way more to Dragon Ball than someone looking from the outside in will think about it you know so I mean that's the case with a lot of different franchises I mean remember for for years people always looked down on comic books and comic book cartoons and movies because oh that's just a bunch of people dressed up in superhero costumes punching people it's for children you know like it says right here the show is immature and only for kids but you know I know a lot of people didn't really get the chance to see it because the YouTube algorithm which you know is always a factor in my channel but the fact of the matter is I did a whole video about why Dragon Ball isn't just for kids which you can see right here, and I definitely recommend checking it out because I give a whole in-depth breakdown of as to why Dragon Ball isn't just for kids, as to why it appeals to so many teenagers and especially adults in Western countries, and how that entire argument is just nonsense. So it's definitely worth checking out there. That it was supposed to end after Frieza, and that's another really big one because even in the Dragon Ball community itself, this isn't just a misconception from outside the community, but a big one within it because for years so many people have said that they believe that for a certainty it was supposed to end after Frieza. And sure, you know, if you're looking at the Frieza arc, you know, within the typical terms of an anime, you know, it seems like something that would have been a good cutoff point, you know? Like the traditional kind of tropey ending of the hero disappears after a big battle and he'll be back someday you know something we've seen so many other anime but i feel yes but i want to add that technically it was supposed it like it could have ended after the whole freezer side because mainly the whole story was about goku from beginning to end when he was a, an infant all the way to being a grown adult 
he got married, he had a child. And then, then there was this one lingering factor that ended his whole race, which was Frieza. And we still, and I guess, and like you said, uh, characters that haven't even been uh, explored at, as of yet. Frieza, Frieza's past. What are, what's, what's the name of his kind? People still don't know what the name of Frieza's kind was. All we know is that he's, he's in his name Frieza, his father was named King Cold, and his older brother was named Cooler. That's all we know. We don't know nothing else. So it was really, uh, it was really good to see, you know, what was the thing that ended his race and all that. And then they extended it because... People love Dragon Ball so much. People love Dragon Ball Z. They couldn't get enough of it. There's no there's no way anyone could possibly ever tell me that Dragon Ball Z does not and has not put a big impact on people's lives. And I get it. Like a lot of uh e girls and all that will get upset because uh certain guys have only watched and will only ever watch and ever want to watch Dragon Ball Z where there's thousands upon thousands of animes. Well, from my standpoint, I'm going to say this right now. The reason why that is is because a lot of them cannot relate to other anime. You know, back back, back in those days when Dragon Ball was around, that was all we had. That was all we wanted to look to. That was all we wanted to watch. Yes, there were other animes. Yes, there were. But it didn't... It didn't encapture a lot of a lot of us. It did not. It didn't get us interested. A lot of us weren't interested in in, in, in Inuyasha. A lot of us weren't interested in Lupin the Third. A lot of us weren't interested in uh in like these uh harem uh animes. A lot of us were not interested in that. There were very few of us that were interested in Yu Yu Hakusho. Not many people liked Yu Yu Hakusho, even though Yu Yu Hakusho was a great show. Not many people liked Inuyasha. Even though there's some people that, that, that do enjoy Inuyasha. So you have to look at it like, 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 as, as, as that. Is that. The reason why Dragon Ball is so good is because people enjoy it so much. Because people have, have based their uh insight and looks on life upon this anime alone and that's a powerful thing to say to this day people will instantly get upset at the moment somebody even mentions dragon ball or dragon ball z that's that and that's not an exact an, an exaggeration at all people will live and die for this anime and 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 and, and it just goes to show so no it I, I, I don't think it should have ended after Frieza. I'm glad they're still continuing on it because it's talking up. They're talking about. You're talking about a whole world that can be explored. Characters they haven't even touched yet, like Frieza. You know? They can, they, they can do it. They can do it like this really is a misconception that also comes down to the fact that a lot of people who watch Dragon Ball Z didn't watch Dragon Ball because there were a number of other points before the Frieza arc where it felt like it was going to end, but it definitely wasn't planned to, you know? You had the very first ending of Dragon Ball's first arc, The Hunt for the Dragon Balls, where everyone's story was kind of wrapped up. Bulma got together with Yamcha, Goku found out about the greater world and made his wish. You know, he met the old master Roshi and all this stuff, you know. But, of course, Toriyama decided to keep going on with it. And then eventually we get to the 23rd tournament, you know, the last arc of the actual Dragon Ball anime, which is all part of the same manga, which Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z were a part of, which Toriyama just refers to Dragon Ball. And then we get to the 23rd tournament, where it seems like, again, everything is going to end. Goku had already trained with the highest master on the earth in Kami. Right. He's right. fighting the reincarnation of King Piccolo, and it's for the fate of the entire world, and every 
everything seems like it was ready to end. Goku's gonna get married to Chi Chi. He flies off. But of course, you know, Toriyama again has Master Roshi saying, don't worry, Dragon Ball isn't over yet. It's gonna keep going. So I feel like maybe if you're looking at it just from the perspective of the anime, it almost seems like that's gonna be the case. But there's never any real intention of Toriyama ending with Frieza. And, you know, if you read in the manga, this is even more apparent because of the fact that literally the next chapter, here's Frieza back again with his father, and wait a second, it's Trunks, what's going on? So, it's a lot clearer when you actually read the manga. Vegeta's a better father than Goku. I mean, this one, of course, is debatable, and I'm sure that even after this, people are still going to be debating about it in the comments, along with a lot of these others. And I've talked about how I don't really agree with the whole Goku is a bad father thing in the past, and I think that's really played up by Dragon Ball fans, and especially the Team 4 Star version of Dragon Ball, which so many people seem to take seriously for some reason, even though it's obviously just a spoof. But it well, I'll say this. Yes, a lot of Dragon Ball fans take it over the top and say that Goku was a bad father, that he doesn't care. It's not the fact that he didn't care. It's just the fact that he was not alive around the time when Gohan was growing up and Goten was born. He was not around. Goku was dead. After... Gohan had defeated Cell. Goku stayed in heaven. Well, not even, not stayed in heaven. He stayed with King Kai. All the way up till Gohan was damn near an adult. And Goten just so happened to pop up, pop up. And Goku didn't, apparently, did not know anything about Goten. Even though he, he can clearly connect with his family through through telepathy so like goku goku in a sense realized his family was going to be all right because of the fact that there was no evil that was going to be present but that was also a bad move because you cut off yourself from your own family's growth Chi Chi was in full control of Gohan. He concentrated fully on his studying. Didn't want to, you know, keep practice fighting, which was the downfall of Gohan. Um, and Goten was the uh, maker upper to her mistake. So it wasn't the fact that Goku was a bad father. It was the fact that he was a missing father. Like he was not around. He just what he he was dead. He was he was just not around. Now Vegeta. I said this before. Vegeta is the representation of the old ways of Saiyans. Saiyans were cold, or were a cold savage race. If you, in their mind, if you couldn't make it, if you couldn't survive, oh well, nature of the beast, survival. You just were weak. And whatnot. So, despite the fact that after all of that, you know, Vegeta was still in his ways of like only the strong can survive. But he was he was still uh uh nurturing to his son a bit. Like he like he didn't want to he didn't want to be so hard on him because he realized that this is this is not like a purebred Saiyan. He's half Saiyan, half human. So you so he had to be there for Trunks, even though he didn't really open himself up to his own son. So it's not the fact that Vegeta was a better father than Goku. Goku was not around, and Vegeta was just stern with Trunks. That's mainly what it was. Uh, let's see if I'm recording. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, I am. Okay. But yeah, continue. Again, this comes down to a lot of the fan base having only seen Dragon Ball Z like 20 years ago at this point, and basing everything off their fuzzy memories, or memes they saw on the internet. 
Now, a lot of this comes down to Goku's personality as a character. He was raised on a mountain by himself for the most part after Grandpa Gohan died. He's very ignorant and naive, so he doesn't really understand what it means to be a, quote, good father, you know? That's why he's not really around. That's why his main focus is still on fighting. But that doesn't mean he never focuses on his children or his right. love. Right, that doesn't you know? mean that at all. I think it's quite the opposite with Gohan because... Goku's not only training Gohan and trying to help him and fight and defend him at various points throughout Z, but he literally sacrifices his life for Gohan and for his family. And I think even though Toriyama and the writers in Dragon Ball Super don't really focus on it, when it comes to Goku's motivation, his family is likely always on his mind when he's training. Even if it isn't the highest priority in his life, defending his friends and his family is certainly a big factor. So I don't agree that Goku is a bad father, but at the same time, you know, is he a better father than Vegeta? I mean, Vegeta is certainly a more attentive father, and he seems to have far better fatherly instincts, but again, he was also raised by his father, King Vegeta. So maybe you can argue he is a better father, but I think it's all debatable. That Dragon Ball Evolution was a real movie. Oh, well, Lord. as much as I'd like to say that was just another example of mass hysteria, I've seen that movie, and it's going to be burned into my mind and my nightmares forever. Thanks for reminding everyone. Yeah. This one is somewhat Thank different, you. you know, basically that Dragon Ball is just mindless entertainment despite the fact that it has enough substance to be taken seriously. I wouldn't say it's exactly the deepest series out there, you know, but at the same time I would say that it certainly has a lot more substance than people give it credit for. And here's another really good point that I think a lot of people have missed out in the past, especially on videos where I talk about other anime which is that it lazily copied the cliches it's criticized for when in fact it created most of the formula that is now used in shonen anime today, which is exactly true. I was surprised how many people tried to tell me that they believe that Dragon Ball is a generic anime, an anime which is something that, you know, is using so many different cliches and tropes that a lot of other anime after it uses, but you need to keep in mind that that is after. So many of these anime that exist today took so much inspiration from Dragon Ball, it's not even funny. Uh, you look at series like My Hero Academia, One Piece, Naruto, so many of these top anime series out there have so clearly taken inspiration from Dragon Ball and copied so many of the different formulas that Toriyama came up with. Yeah, because like I said before, Dragon Ball hit home for a lot of us. It, 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 it is loved by all. And for those who cannot stand it, complain about the fact that people love it so much. Because they don't understand. Oh, well. Oh, fucking well. That's just the way it is. That, that, that's just facts. These other animes like My Hero Academia and, and Naruto and all, all that shit, it copied the formula from Dragon Ball. It copied the formula. You cannot tell me it, they, that they, they that they that they didn't. You can't. It's it's as clear as day. Such as transformations, the rival dynamic between the main character and his edgy rival, screaming and powering up, beam struggles, and so many other things that very clearly came from Dragon Ball, or at least were highly popularized in Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball wasn't the first of the wuxia subgenre. And really, in many ways, Dragon Ball made anime and manga what it is today. Obviously, there have been some other incredibly influential series like Yu Yu Hakusho, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right, right, Fist right. of the North Star, right. and more. But again, so many of the cliches, or the tropes as people would call them now, came from Dragon Ball. And back then, they were pretty revolutionary. That Bulma's last name is Briefs. Yeah, this is 100% false. Bulma does not have a last name. And I think this all originated with the Dragon Ball Z dub. Because there are so many big dub changes in the original English dub of Dragon Ball Z, and so many people, especially American fans, have only seen Dragon Ball Z in English, and unfortunately with that original English dub. And unlike a lot of my fellow YouTubers, I don't really hate the original English dub of Dragon Ball Z. 
Dragon Ball Z, but I do hate the dub changes because the fact of the matter is there are so many that not only drastically change the meaning of scenes and the meaning of dialogue within them, but have been continually confusing and misinforming fans for decades. And this is one of the ones that always sticks out because so many people believe that Bulma's last name is Briefs and that Trunks' last name is Briefs because there are a couple moments in the English dub, particularly in the Boo Saga, where they refer to Trunks as Trunks Briefs. And I believe Bulma as Bulma Briefs. But again, all this is wrong because in the Dragon Ball universe, people don't really have last names. Goku is one of the very few characters, if not the only character we encounter in the Dragon Ball franchise, who actually has a last name, which is Sun, which is why he's referred to as Sun Goku. And it's not to be confused with the Japanese honorific San, because sometimes they do call him Son Goku-san. And I'm sure it gets really confusing when you have to talk about his whole family, such as Son Goku-san's son, Son Goten, but Bulma doesn't have a last name. Her father's name is Dr. Brief, not Briefs, and Brief isn't his last name. Just like with Dr. Jiro, he only has one name, Dr. Jiro. Unlike what some false wikis say, where they say his name is Maki Jiro, which is total bullshit. And I don't know who the hell came up with that. But Bulma, just like pretty much every other character other than Goku's family, doesn't have a last name. So anytime you hear someone say Bulma's last name is Briefs, or they call her Bulma Briefs, you know that's not correct. And Geekdom 101 also did a whole video on this topic, which you guys should check out. And again, a lot of people repeat the misconception that Dragon Ball is only about the fights, which again is incorrect. And I can say personally that I definitely don't agree with this because when I first got into Dragon Ball, it wasn't even an episode when there was any fighting. When right. I first saw Dragon Ball Z in the early 90s in syndication before it was on Toonami, I think the first episode I saw was actually when Goku was on King Kai's planet. And that was actually what got me really interested in the story. The fact that the main character Character was on this small planetoid with high gravity in this other dimension and they were discussing how the powers worked and the history of the characters and stuff like that. All of that was way more interesting to me than just a bunch of people punching each other with no rhyme or reason. And I think... Like, okay, deadass, the thing that got me into Dragon Ball was that exact episode. I remember it was the first time I even bothered to watch it it was on saturday i think it was like 12 o'clock in, at uh, in the daytime this was back in the day when they were showing dragon ball like that on cartoon network okay um it was that exact episode where goku was on snake way and he was running i think he was running to king kai's planet or back or or or, or or um, from King Kai's planet to go back to Earth. And he was just running. Um, meanwhile, everyone was fighting uh, back on Earth and whatnot. Uh, and there was no screaming. Like he was saying, the only time you ever hear someone screaming and whatnot is when Goku or Vegeta had to go Super Saiyan. It's mainly Goku that screams. And I don't even understand why people you know have a problem with that it's dragon ball it's dragon ball z and uh, you know what if we're going to talk about dragon ball alone goku never screamed honestly he was more calm than than, than what than, than what not and if he ever screamed it was he, he was screaming of, of his power pole to to extend no pun intended so if you're, you know, talking about that, there were, there's hardly ever any screaming. Only reason why people say that is because of the memes and whatnot. That's the only reason why people, why people say that shit. That's the only reason. Invalid. I think that stuck with me ever since then because that was one of my main problems with the Tournament to Power, for instance, where a lot of times it was just fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting dragged out for 70 episodes. And a lot of times I was completely bored as a result of it because a lot of fans, including myself, aren't just there to see people punching each other and screaming and firing blasts. That's not what keeps you with Dragon Ball especially over the course of entire series. Dragon Ball being a prequel to Z. Now, I'm pretty sure
sure this just started out as a joke, but the fact that people actually think that Dragon Ball is a prequel to Dragon Ball Z, even though a prequel is something that is created after the fact in order to give extra context for something as to what happened before it, is just mind-boggling to me. Like, all you have to do is a Google search. And really, that comes down to so many of these different misconceptions that have always annoyed me, especially when people comment them. Because so many times a YouTuber will look in his comments and it'll just be filled with people trying to tell them that they're wrong, even though the person who is saying they're wrong is basing everything off of a massive misconception, that all you have to do is type in something into Google and you'll instantly be proven incorrect about it. And that's a big one here because Dragon Ball came before Dragon Ball Z. Right. The Dragon Ball manga is literally called the Dragon Ball manga. Toriyama calls it Dragon Ball. Z does not exist in the manga. It only exists in the English versions of the manga because they broke it up because of what American fans believe is a separation which isn't actually there. How about that shit? The only reason why it's called Z is because America. That's the only reason. If it wasn't for that, it would still be called Dragon Ball. How about that? How about that shit? So with that logic, nobody better not even give me any shit when I say just Dragon Ball instead of just Dragon Ball Z. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Fine. You want to say Dragon Ball Super? Okay, fine. I'm still calling it Dragon Ball at the end of the day. Just to sum it up. Because it's still, it's still Dragon Ball. So hush. It's not that serious. It's Dragon Ball. Doesn't matter. Only reason why it's given those other pretenses is because of us. Mainly because we don't know how to tell the difference between the two. So they they just gave us a, a, a little letter or a name. Ain't that some shit. The entire franchise is called Dragon Ball. Z was just broken up into a separate anime because of a changeover in staff and the people behind it at Toei wanted to go in a more serious direction like some of the other anime at the time. Mr. Fusion actually has a whole video where he breaks this whole thing down. So I don't, I, I I don't doubt it. I think it's worth checking it out because there are this so is many really Dragon Ball explanation videos not even funny. who has been a big fan of Dragon Ball for a long time. And anyone who hasn't seen Dragon Ball or read the original Dragon Ball section of the manga and is a fan of Z and Dragon Ball Super and I guess even GT should definitely check it out because not only is it something that really should be required viewing and reading for a Dragon Ball fan, but so much of it actually puts most of the modern Dragon Ball to shame in terms of writing, humor, and even action. And the next one is that Toriyama's interviews trump what he wrote in his own material. Now this is a good one. If it isn't on the page, it isn't on the stage, I always say. That's an interesting way of putting it. And then the rest of it is another point I've already covered. So this is a misconception that a lot of people don't even really consider a misconception, but I kind of do myself because it comes down to what information and materials we prioritize in this fan base. Now as we know as Dragon Ball fans, the curator Toriyama loves to have these interviews every now and then where he puts out information that is often either supplementary and adding to what we already Wait a minute, hold on. I need to read this. Toriyama's interviews trump what he wrote on his in his own material. Yeah, he 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 tends to do that a lot. If it isn't on his page, it isn't on this stage. I always say that along with Goku and Chi Chi parenting skills, like people thinking Goku's state did just to train or chi chi ruined gohan you know the story that he wrote in the manga or is something that completely contradicts or retcons it so for instance when he says that majin buu wasn't created by bibbity who was babidi's father but was rather some being that always existed and bibbity just so happened to figure out how to summon him 
Which, if you read the manga, is completely contradictory because of the fact that Supreme Kai flat out says that Bibbidi created him kind of by accident and couldn't control him. Something that Bobbidi also says. And it really goes on from there, be it Toriyama's direct interviews or, you know, information that he kind of supervised and probably just skimmed over briefly while he was eating sushi one day in some of these guides. And maybe just wrote a tidbit or a section here and there that I highly doubt he even remembers or factors into his writing nowadays. And people will take these guides and they will be like, oh, this is a smoking gun for my argument. This is proof from the creator himself as to how this works or what this multiplier for this form is or whatever. But at the end of the day, the manga and the original source material is always going to trump everything else. It's the true canon. It's the thing that all this other information is based off of. And if Dragon Ball was ever rebooted, for instance, and every single thing in the canon right now is thrown away, which is basically what happened with Disney Star Wars and the extended universe, then the original manga is the thing that's going to remain canon and the only thing that's really going to matter at the end of the day. I mean, There's, that is why people tell, and I will say all the time, read the original source material before you go and watch what uh what's on the big screen i say that all the time i even lost a friend who got mad because he just didn't care about uh the original source material about comics and whatnot and, was, and and he just was talking all this out this ridiculous mess assuming that he knew what he, what he was talking about when really he didn't and it wasn't that big of a deal it's just that he was annoying with it Cause, Cause, he was really bragging that you know he knew what he was talking about when really he wasn't. The original source material of everything is always going to be better than what is being put out because there are because there are more details in mangas and books and comics and like in books. Period. Any writing material is going to be more detailed, more factual. And more, uh, uh, more meaningful for people. And if you say, "Well, I don't want to read or whatnot," stop being weak, please. Stop being weak. It it it's not uh, that end of the world to read a book. Let me tell you something. You you will be surprised how much you learn from a book. Once you get that mentality of uh, of like uh, of school out out of the way as to why you should read, you will learn to love reading. This is coming from me. Look, and if you don't want to listen to me, my words hold no, uh, hold no weight. Okay, don't take what I say as facts. All I'm saying is what I know. You don't have to listen. I'm just saying. You should give it a chance. That's all I'm saying. Because it's more detail. It's a lot more stuff that you don't know that you think you know. I mean, we've seen these interviews and these guidebooks, they constantly contradict each other. One Daizenshi will say that Gohan was a Super Saiyan 2 against Sabora. Another one will say that he was a Super Saiyan. So what I always say is that when it comes to these guides, we should always take them kind of with a grain of salt, as yeah. well as the Toriyama interviews, yeah. especially when it comes to him, because he usually doesn't remember the things he even says in them. So when it comes to his interviews in these guides, we should always factor in whether it contradicts the original material and, of course, if it actually makes sense within the course of what he originally wrote. And if it doesn't, then you're free to kind of toss them out if you see fit. That Yamcha is weak. Absolutely not. He is not... I will not stand for this. Why do people keep bashing Yamcha? All because he got blown up by that fucking Cyberman. Everyone bashes and makes fun of Yamcha. There are, there are memes upon memes upon memes of Yamcha getting cucked and, and ridiculed because of that one fact. Because of that one fact. First of all, Bama, Bama is a thought. I'm going to say that right now. I don't care what anybody says. But Bama's a thought. She literally wanted to plow, wanted, uh, wanted anyone to plow her. Okay? When she was, when she first met Goku, she would, t 
she was hot in the pants all the doggone time because she wanted to have a boyfriend so goddamn bad. And it didn't get any better once, you know, she met up with Yamcha. She was always complaining, always whining, always talking about, oh, I want this, I want that. While Yamcha is busy trying to help Goku, you know, not die the next day. He's busy training Knowing that he's a fighter, she's busy complaining, bitching, and whining because he's doing his thing. He's doing something. Then she winds up dating a guy that treats her just as just as badly. Marries him. Vegeta. Like... That girl was was a lost cause. Yamcha is better off without her, okay? The man is a professional uh, a baseball player. He is not weak at all. Yamcha is not weak. The only reason why y'all say is because he because he can't stand toe to toe against the one against the enemies that Goku fights. So? Where's your argument? Who cares about that? Goku can hardly stand up against them um, um, anyway. Only reason why he, he, he even beat most of them was because of the, the spirit bomb. That's it. There's literally nothing else to that. And if you really want to get, uh, uh, want to talk about it, the only reason why he even beat Jiren is because Frieza was helping him. And, and Android um, 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 17. That's it. That's the only reason why he even got to beat uh, uh, Jiren. After that, it was a power struggle. And he kept um, um, losing his energy and whatnot. So, no, Goku is not all that hot shit compared to Yamcha. He's not. He ain't doing no better. Because he, he's been struggling with, with fighting, with fighting uh, m most enemies. And I, I already know. I can tell I'm going to get so many hate comments right now. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Because y'all give me hate comments anyway. Um, y'all, I'm just not weak. At all. He's not. Stop slandering Yamcha. Stop it. Because it doesn't make any sense. Weak if you actually were to put him in Marvel or DC or most other fictional universes. I mean, most people look at Yamcha as being weak, but the truth is he definitely couldn't be further from that if we actually compare him to most superheroes or even supervillains or other anime characters. Put Yamcha in My Hero Academia, he'd just be one-shotting the entire League of Villains. Same thing with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. If you put him in Marvel or DC, he'd be one of the most powerful Avengers or one of the most powerful members of the Justice League. So Yamcha is incredibly powerful, he can blow up planets, and who even knows what else at this point. It's just that he so happens to live in a world filled with incredibly overpowered people who have abilities that are always going to keep them above him. And again, if you were to put them into another fictional world, would just utterly devastate literally everyone they fight with the exception of the highest tier. Exactly. So this is another big one that a lot of people have brought up that Goku always wins being a misconception, which it definitely is. Especially when it comes to Dragon Ball Super, Goku has lost a bunch, you know? What did I just say what did i just say what did i just say what did, what, what did i just bring up about goku it's not that goku always wins goku struggles when he fights he gets stronger he meets someone stronger than him and he struggles and the only reason why he even barely wins by the skin of his teeth is because of just pure luck, either luck or or uh, uh, instantaneous um, inspiration to turn it around, or or to look for a, a weak point. That's it. When he when when Goku first fought Piccolo, when he was evil in the tournament and whatnot. Goku literally was struggling to fight this man. 
And every time he came close to even ending it, he would let Piccolo have a chance to get stronger and to regain his energy. And and it fucked him over each and every time. Piccolo ended up breaking his arm. Uh, he barely could even move. He was bleeding. I think he was bleeding out of his... I think it was out of his chest and whatnot when he was fighting Piccolo. And all because he wanted a fair fight while, while they're almost dying. Freaking Kami was trying to help him. Goku said nah. While he was struggling. To, this man was losing a fight. The only reason why he even got to one was because I think... Yeah, the, 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 the spare bomb. Or, or, or was it a, 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 a afflicted Kamehameha wave? I can't remember, but it was one of those two. It's always one of those two when he's fighting his enemies. Always one of those two. And he always gets powers, uh, not powers, but energy from, his, from, from, from the other fighters. Always. Look in any fight that he's been in. It's always that seg that's that uh, uh cycle. He fights them, uh uh has the advantage, the the the, the enemy is like weak and whatnot. He decides, uh eh, I'll, I'll give you some energy. Get stronger, almost damn near kills him, then his friends come in or 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 whatnot, give some energy. Spear bomb, command mayor, super command mayor, bam. There was a point when he pretty much was beating everyone, but when you actually look over the course of the entire franchise, he's lost to a bunch of people. I mean, he lost to Yamcha, he lost to Master Roshi, he lost to King Piccolo, he lost to Raditz, he lost to Vegeta twice. He basically lost to Captain Ginyu, he would have instantly lost to Frieza if Frieza actually tried. He lost to Android 19, he lost to Cell, he pretty much lost to Kid Buu because of Super same three, and that's just in the first two series. And although there is an annoying subset of the fan base out there who thinks that Goku can always win no matter what, even though it's pretty obvious that's not the case, right. and they always make excuses for why he loses, the fact of the matter is that Goku has lost plenty, and there are plenty of other anime protagonists who have won way more than Goku has. Yes. Tien isn't the strongest Earthling, well he certainly isn't anymore. That Z is the best or the only one worth watching, I mean there's a big argument between whether Dragon Ball or Z is the best. And there's actually a good video that came out about this supporting Dragon Ball over Z by this YouTuber named The Act Man, who I think is definitely worth checking out. That Vegeta needed Bobbity to become a Super Saiyan 2 is another really good misconception because I think it's pretty clear if you actually read the manga and you look really into what Vegeta is saying during the Buu Saga, that Vegeta is almost certainly a Super Saiyan 2 before the tournament even happens. That's what I'm saying! Whoa, hold on! Who, 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 who came up with that bullshit? Vegeta was Super Saiyan 2 before he even met Bobbity. That doesn't make any sense! How? So we just skip past the the, the cell saga. We just skip past the, the, the past the cell saga, huh? Wow. Wow. Otherwise, he wouldn't keep saying how he thinks that he would be able to defeat Gohan at this point. He wouldn't look down on the power that Super Saiyan 2 Gohan has if he himself didn't have at least a comparable level of power. And then when Goku goes Super Saiyan 2 against Yakan, Vegeta says, oh, so he surpassed the Super Saiyan wall too. So I think it's pretty obvious that he has already done that as well. It's just that he isn't as powerful as Goku. And literally the entire point of the Majin boost was to give him that little boost that he needed to be up to par with Goku. At least as a Super Saiyan 2, because Goku as a Super Saiyan 3 still would have one-shot Majin Vegeta. Alright guys, so this has been the biggest misconceptions about the draft. <sighs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done with this. I'm, I'm done. Like... <sighs> I swear, people disappoint me so much. <laughs> mm, I feel like one day I'm going to take off 
uh, uh, like a week of, of being on the internet and just get some fresh air. You know what I'm saying? And just, just, just breathe for a second because, oh Lord, let me know what y'all think down below about this. Um, I realize this is a long video. I, I apologize. This has been Master Real Sagrai. I love y'all. See you next time.